very briefly, can you describe the content, very briefly, of the questions here that you've put on the table of the European Commission? I've asked 15 questions to the European Commission. They all have to do with alleged irregularities in OLAF. Nomination processes that have uh, been corrupt, uh, the way how the Director General has been nominated of OLAF, um, the way how the European Commission does not intervene in irregularities, uh, the fact that the European Parliament does not act uh, and does not take up its responsibility, those are the subjects of my questions. It has been known for some time that OLAF is, no, is not functioning as well as it, as it should. What do these questions reveal that we have not known so far? These questions reveal that um, OLAF is in fact a nice cozy village where people get nominated not on the basis of professional qualifications but on the basis of agreements and on the basis of political color, on the basis of nationality. Um, there are even officials who are recruited who do not speak any foreign language, which is a standard requirement for any European official. But isn't that in a way also simply the way things are done here in Brussels? You have to know somebody to get something done. I am an example of an official who got in without uh, uh, friends helping me. I had to go through an external recruitment procedure. You're referring to your time at the European Commission? Yes, that's right. But especially with the anti-fraud service OLAF, uh, there we should be uh, more transparent and we should be clearer than clear. There you should only recruit specialists who merit to be appointed there on the basis of their professional qualifications. And if you start in OLAF already to recruit friends, then I think you can forget about fraud busting. Why do you think this happens at OLAF? I don't know. I'm, I'm very amazed. The, I, am, um, I receive information from sources inside OLAF who provide me with information on irregular tender procedures, on irregular recruitment procedures, on uh, the irregular nomination of the Director General of OLAF, but I do not see why this uh, happens. I, I do not see the big ag agenda behind it. It seems like this is a, a perfect example for the European Parliament to call the European Commission and specifically OLAF the question. I've tried it already before. On the 16th of July 2007, there was a closed door meeting uh, in a very uh, restrained company of the Budget Control Committee. Mr. Brunner had to answer questions, but uh, the uh, Parliament, the members of the Parliament who were very critical were just a minority. The majority of the MEPs supported the anti-fraud office, so there is still no basis for the Parliament to uh, launch an inquiry or to ask the European uh, Commission to launch an inquiry by its specialist uh, disciplinary department. So far you're the only MEP who is really pushing this issue of the alleged fraud at, uh, at OLAF. What support do you expect from your fellow MEPs? There are two different kind of MEPs. There are MEPs who agree with my objectives and who will uh, support me if my material is convincing enough. Uh, but there are also MEPs who uh, support the status quo, who do not want any wrinkles on the surface of the European waters and who will support uh, the established powers in the European institutions and also in the anti-fraud office. And there it will be much more difficult to have the support of these MEPs. So what are you doing to get that support? I'm writing a big file that I will submit to the chairman of the supervisory committee of OLAF and although this committee is not in a position to really intervene in OLAF, I will make sure that they have a file in possession, that they have to do something with it and that they will recommend the budgetary control committee of the parliament to take steps and probably on the 26th of November the Budget Control Committee will meet with the uh, delegation of the Supervisory Committee of OLAF and if the recommendations are then positive, then we will see the launch of an inquiry into the alleged irregularities in the anti-fraud office. 
And what do you feel firmly should be the outcome of that inquiry? What should happen with Olaf? I think that uh, we uh, should be happy already with an inquiry of the specialized disciplinary office of the European Commission. They should look into the individual irregularities of OLAF officials and from that a picture will arise of multiple irregularities committed in the anti-fraud office and from there there will be a new inquiry and it will lead to the entire reorganization of the anti-fraud office or at least that's what I'm hoping for. You're saying you, were, you would firmly be in favor of a, a, a European public prosecutor, which there is no, but what steps would you consider the European Union should take towards that direction? First, the European Union should decide that in every national public prosecutor's office there should be instituted a specialized department on European fraud issues. Then these specialized departments any national public prosecutor's offices should cooperate and work together and they should also appoint uh, representatives that supervise the European Anti-Fraud Office. In such a way you would have already uh, an organization, a network that works together on the scale of the European Union without the necessity to change the treaty which is necessary if you would eventually want to have a public prosecutor's office uh, in Brussels uh, that would uh, work in the European Union. You're basically saying the EU's member states should have their own European fraud experts? Yes, that's right. Because European money is spent in all member states, also European officials come from all member states, and if you have specialists in all the member states then the proper priority will be given to the investigations into uh, fraud with European money. So far we see an incompetent European anti-fraud body and if they transfer exceptionally a file to the National Prosecutor's Office then it is at the low end of the pile of files that they have to treat. They do not give it any priority but if you would have a specialized office in the European member states that deal with European fraud matters, they would deal with it with the necessary priority. Uh, ultimately, when you look at this issue of OLAF, of fraud, irregularities, what, what is at stake over here? Could, could you be, be saying that this, the, the whole credibility of the European Union's institutions is at stake? I don't know, but if you see that the European Anti-Fraud Office doesn't function properly, and if you see that the uh, European Commissioner responsible for fight against fraud does not want to intervene into OLAF, into the anti-fraud office, and if you see that the European Parliament does not want to intervene either, and that in the end the European Ombudsman writes a very critical report on the functioning of the anti-fraud office OLAF, he puts it on the table of the European Parliament and the European Parliament is already hesitating for two years to do something about it. I think it becomes a, a European-wide problem and we have to redraft the institutional construction of Europe. So maybe this should even be made part of the EU reform treaty? The EU reform treaty is not a correct treaty. It has the same mistakes in it as the previous European uh, draft constitution that was voted down by the French and the Dutch voters. What we should have in Europe is a clear choice. Do we want to have a supranational Europe or do we want to have an intergovernmental Europe? In an intergovernmental Europe the Council of Ministers is the power that has to say and they need a president that decides in the European Union if you have a, a, a supranational Europe it's the European Commission that will develop into uh, a European government and the European Parliament has a lot to say and has the control mechanism on the European Commission but with a supranational Europe it's the national parliaments that control the Council and that has your preference? I don't have a preference I want to have a clear construction and both alternatives are valid but what we see now is this so-called unique European Union personality in this sui generis construction where you see elements 
of supranationality and elements of intergovernmentality mixed together with a huge democratic deficit. Well, you, you mentioned it uh, earlier today, also the Hercule program at Olaf. Is there anything you can say about that? The, the program where Olaf is also handing out subsidies to create anti-fraud organizations in the member states. Yes, that is a huge problem in itself. If you indicate Olaf as a manager of, of funds, of European funds, then Olaf has two hats. They have a hat of fraud buster, but they also have a hat of commission department who manages a huge amount of money. And if then, in that case, there would be fraud inside the Hercule program, then Olaf uh, does not know what to do anymore. Do they have to fight the fraud or do they have to negotiate with the member state in order to settle the problems in the fraud? And indeed, fraud is happening in the Hercule program and Olaf is mixing these two hats together. So they are going on mission, but people who are managing the money are going on mission together with the people who are fighting the fraud inside this money. So uh, this is not clear anymore. There is no separation of duties anymore. So that in itself is already one of the problems in Olaf.